Welcome back YouTube, you have Ahmed again from In-Depth Tech Reviews and today I have a very exciting video for every Android user and specifically for Pixel users. As expected every year with every new Pixel launch we get our hands on some new features from the new lineup of Google and thanks to XDA developers for being on top of that every year. So in today's video I'm going to show you all the new features I managed to get my hands on from the Pixel 5 and the Pixel 4a 5G on my older Pixel models. But before getting started, let's make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified every time I post a new video. So let's jump in. Now let's start with the new Pixel 5 live wallpapers. And as you see, I have one of them installed on my Pixel 4 XL, also on my Pixel 3 XL and the Pixel 4a. To get the new live wallpapers, the process is very simple. Just head over to the XDA developers website and I'm gonna leave the link in the description below. It will tell you what are the new wallpapers you will get. You will get the uh, moving shadows and also the stepping stone, which is the one I'm currently using. There is also a third one, but sadly they were not able to port it from the Pixel 5 yet. Uh, so stay tuned for that. And when you scroll down, you will see download the Google Pixel 5 live wallpapers. When you hit download, it will take you to a page to explain to you how to get it on any Android device that is running Android 7 or later. And if you scroll down a little bit, you will see also the APK downloads right here. Also keep in mind that if you have a previous uh, uh, APK for the Google Live wallpapers, you need to uninstall this first to be able to install the new one. But if you are using a, a Google Pixel phone, just install the APK straight away. You will not face any issues. Also to get access to the live wallpaper and set it on your device, if you are using LG or Samsung device, uh, don't go to the Google's wallpapers app, but uh, you need to go to uh, the settings, then wallpapers and themes, and then wallpapers and then view all. Once it shows all the wallpapers, select the three dots in the upper right corner and it should say live wallpapers. Then you will be able to access the new Pixel live wallpapers and set it on your device. One more thing to keep in mind here, if you are using a non-Qualcomm device, the stepping stone wallpaper might have some issues, but XDA developers are currently investigating the issue and hopefully they will find a solution. And if you are a Pixel user, all you need to do is to tap and hold anywhere on your home screen, go to styles and wallpapers. Those two wallpapers should appear under the Come Alive section, but because they are ported, they will appear under the live wallpapers section. And as you see here, I have the different variants of the same wallpaper separated. However, they are exactly the same thing. If you are using a Pixel 4 XL like in my case here and open the first one, you can get access to the four different styles of the same wallpaper under the customize tab. But in some phones, they have to be separated. Uh, you can choose from this blue one or green, this purple and another green one. And when it comes to stepping stone, you will get four different colors to choose from. As you see here, I have a kind of gray color and then pink, green, and turquoise, I think. Uh, so you can choose from the four different colors. Both wallpapers will give you a nice effect when you tilt the device. So as you see here, when I, when I tilt the device, the stones are moving. Also, when I scroll through the home screen, you will see the wallpaper is also rotating with me. The stepping stone wallpaper will become a little bit dimmer at night. Also, the shapes of the stones will dynamically change. So if you take a look here on my Pixel 4a, you will see the shapes are totally different from the Pixel 4 XL. And all the time I keep getting different shapes in the wallpaper. All of them looks really cool and nice. Uh, let's also check it when unlocking the phone. You will see also a nice effect when unlocking the phone. Uh, when you pull down your notification shade, the wallpaper will zoom out and then zoom back in. Same thing as getting your app drawer. Next, Google Recorder app version 2.0. If you are a Pixel user, you will get the update through the Play Store, like in my case. 
For non-Pixel users, you need to follow a certain process that I'm going to share with you after showing you the new features. The first new feature you get with version 2.0 is called the Smart Scrolling. Here I have a recording and when I go to the transcript tab, then scroll a little bit, you will see the scroll bar is now active. When I tap on it, it will give me quick shortcuts to certain parts of my recording. These are considered the most important parts of the recording and this happens automatically. So as you see, it's considering the word XDA as important. So when I tap on the word, it will take me straight away to this part of my recording. Next, the new editing tools. For example, when you highlight a certain part of your recording and then tap on the scissors icon at the top right corner, you will get a new editing page. Here you have two options, you have remove and crop. When you tap on remove, it will simply remove this part of your recording. You can also undo the changes by tapping on the undo button at the top right corner. Or when you tap on crop, it will remove anything else and keep only the highlighted text. It also works the same under the audio tab. So if you are in the audio tab, you can uh, drag the trimmer anywhere you want and the crop from here. And it will reflect also in the transcript tab. One more feature you get with version 2.0 is called video clip and this is a really cool feature. For example, if you want to share your recording, tap the three dots at the top, then tap on share. You will see a new option at the bottom called video clip. If your recording is more than one minute, it will tell you that you can use the feature only with recordings less than 60 seconds. So I will try another one and then tap on share one more time, then tap on video clip. And here you can create a video clip of your recording with a dynamic transcript for the recording and also the waveform. You can either choose between the transcript and waveform all the way or the waveform only. So let's choose both of them. And then you can choose also the layout. Would you like to make it a square, a portrait or landscape? So let's go for the portrait one. And then you can also choose the theme. So you have dark and light theme. So I will go with the light theme and then tap on create. And the video clip is now ready. I can either save it or share it straight away. So let's play it first. So as you see here, the waveform and the transcript of my recording is playing nicely and I can share that straight away with anyone. It looks really gorgeous and I do like this feature a lot. Now let me show you how to install the Google Recorder version 2.0 on non-Pixel devices. First, you need to click the link in the description below that will take you to the uh, page on XDA developers website. Scroll down a little bit and you will see download Google Recorder 2.0. You can open in Chrome, you don't have to use the Mega app. It will take you to the Mega website uh, to download that file. Keep in mind that this file is .apks, which means it's a split uh, APK file, which means it consists of more than one APK. And to be able to install this type of files, you need to download another app called the Split APKs Installer. It's already available in the Play Store and it's free. Open the app and then it will show you the button to select the APKs file. Then head over to the download folder. Then look for the file you just downloaded from uh, the Mega website. Here I have it called Recorder 2.0. Then tap on Select. It will ask you to give permission uh, to install uh, APKs on the device. Tap on Settings, allow the permission, head back to uh, the same screen and then tap on Install. It will be installed on your phone, but because I already have it on my Pixel device, I don't need to do all these steps. Next, the new Pixel Launcher, but this one is only available for Pixel users. So I'm gonna show you what's new and then show you how to get it on your Pixel device. In the new Pixel Launcher, you can change the grid size of your home screen. To do this, tap and hold anywhere on your home screen and then go to Styles and Wallpapers. You will see a new tab at the bottom called Grid. When you tap on it, 
you will see more than one size. You have 5x5, 4x4, 3x3, and 2x2. So let's give that a try. Let's start with the 4x4 option. When I tap on 4x4 and hit apply, give it a few seconds, and you see the icons now are a lot bigger. Also, the at a glance widget is now shifted to the side, and instead of being centered, the icons are a lot bigger as you see, and some of my widgets, like this one, appearing as an icon because the icons are big enough to uh, be in the same size of a widget. And that's it. So let's try also the 3 by 3 option. Give it a few seconds, and the icons are even bigger. They are huge. Um, so, for example, if you have a folder that includes a lot of apps, like in, in the games folder I have here, you will see at the bottom you have a visionation option. You will have three pages from the same folder that you can scroll through. Other than this, the icons are bigger and that's pretty much it. Keep in mind that when you change your grid size, you don't need to worry about misorganizing your apps because once you revert back to your original size, it will put everything back in its original position. So when I get back to 5x5, everything is exactly the same. So that's everything you get with the new Pixel Launcher. Keep in mind that the grid option only showed up on my Pixel 4 XL and the Pixel 3 XL, but it didn't show up on my Pixel 4a. So I'm not sure what triggers the new grid option, maybe the screen size, but I'm not sure. Now let me show you how to get it on your device. Once more, head over to the XDA developers website by using the link in the description below. Scroll down a little bit and you will see the download option, right? Tap on download. It will take you again to the mega website. Download the file. This time it's .apk that you can install normally without the need to use any third-party apps. And that's it. It will be installed on your Pixel phone. Next, the star of the show, Gcam version 8.0 that you can now install on your older Pixel models. And I have it installed on my Pixel 3 XL only because I couldn't install it on my Pixel 4 XL or the Pixel 4a. And I'm going to explain to you why later in this video and how to overcome this issue. But for now, let me show you what's new in Gcam version 8. First, I'm not going to talk about any improvements in the photo quality because I didn't test it yet. However, I'm going to show you the new design and the new features you get. The first thing I noticed is the new leveling icon. As you see here, there is a plus sign in the center. And when I tilt the phone, you will get another one that will give you an indication that your phone is not centered, which is very similar to the one we have in iOS 14. Also, you will get a quick uh, switch between the 2x and the 1x zoom that you can tap on or you can drag your finger on top of it to switch between the two modes. And when you look closely at the new zoom toggles, when I pinch to zoom, they will change to a slider with a nice animation. So let me show you this again. And I also found this new slider is a lot more precise than the previous Gcam versions. I can easily get the amount of zoom I want without any issues. Back again to phone leveling. If you are holding your phone vertically, you will also get a better tool that can help you adjust your phone, not only to the sides, but also the front and back, so you can easily center your photo in all directions. And obviously we get a new shutter key, which is different from the previous versions. When you take a photo, you will see also the social share animation is different. In addition to a new YouTube icon, so you can immediately share videos from your Gcam to YouTube using the new social share option. So once I take a video, now you will see the YouTube icon is active in the social share uh, menu. And also when you expand the settings and then tap on the question mark next to uh, motion photos, it will show you how the feature works. So Google added a lot of guides in the camera app to give you an idea how to use it. Next, the portrait. And when you expand the settings, you will also see a question mark next to face retouching. And when you tap on it, it will show you the differences between the three levels of retouching with real photos. So if you change to subtle, as you see, the photos reloaded and then smooth. So you get a complete idea about the amount of face retouching you are getting. 
And now when you go to night sight and expand the settings, you can now turn off the astrophotography mode if you don't want to use it. So as you see here, there is a toggle at the top, also with a question mark explaining how the astro mode works. And also when you take a night sight photo, you no longer get the hold still message in the center of the viewfinder, but it will appear around the shutter key. Also, when you activate the astro mode, you will see the shutter key icon will look now different. So let me zoom in. As you see here, the icon is now different. Also, when you take an astrophotography image, you will see some changes in the design as well. So now the time counter looks better and you will get a nice animation around the shutter key and it turns to a stop uh, icon. So you can tap on it to stop in the middle if you want. Next, the video mode. And here you will find all the toggles you need for all types of videos. Here you have slow motion, normal, and the time lapse. When you go to slow motion, you will also get some hints about the different slow motion speeds and wh what to use it for. Also the same for the time lapse. When you go, for example, for 10x, it says good for busy sports, uh, good for walking and so on. Uh, that means when you go to more, you will no longer find these modes anymore because they appear directly under the uh, video tab. One more thing I noticed under the video mode, when you expand the settings, and then you set it to 1080p, I no longer see the 60 frames per second option. I only see auto or 30 frames per second. Not sure, is it because the app is not optimized or because uh, the phone will automatically change to 60 frames per second? So we will wait and see. And when it comes to the front facing camera, you will get some new hints. I took some screenshots before. Uh, here is one of them. It will tell you try raising camera for your selfie and when you tap on the hint it will give you this page it will explain to you how to do it you can dismiss or view settings when i go to view in settings i didn't see anything different uh, i only see save selfie as previewed and also here you have try portrait mode as a hint to get google camera version 8 just click the link in the description that will take you to xda developers website then scroll down and you will see download Google camera 8.0 for older pixel phones. Uh, keep in mind that this file is also .apks, which means you will need a separate application to uninstall it, which is the same one I showed you earlier, split APKs installer. Just download the file and then open the split APK installer as before. Uh, then tap on select APKs files, locate the file, and then install it on your phone. But keep in mind that this process failed with me on all Pixel devices. And the only way to do this process is to factory reset your phone. So I had to factory reset one of my phones, which is the Pixel 3 XL, to be able to use Gcam version 8.0. I'm not sure what the reason for resetting the phone, uh, but that's the only way that worked with me. And that's why I only showed you the new application on my Pixel 3 XL because I didn't want to factory reset my daily drivers. But as per XDA developers website, some people managed to install version 8 without the need to factory reset the device using the same method I mentioned earlier. But if it failed with you, in this case, your only option is to factory reset the device. There is also one more way to install Gcam version 8, but it's longer and it requires a PC and some ADB commands. I'm going to also leave a link for this way in the description. But if the process failed with one of them, that means it will fail with all of them. So if you tried one method and it failed, simply reset the phone to factory settings to get it up and running. So that's pretty much it for today. Those are the new features you can get from the Pixel 5 and the Pixel 4a 5G. Most of them are very exciting features. I'm really happy to get them on my older Pixel models. And please let me know in the comments if I missed anything. And thank you so much for watching. I hope you like my video. And if you do, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. Thank you for watching.